you've got um you, you you you've got you've got like people within these communities that like you need diversity. It's so funny that Twitch advocates diversity that they say our most one of our most important foundations and pillars is diversity and yet you don't have diversity in all of your initiatives. Real diversity doesn't just mean you include lesbians, gays and transsexuals and marginalized groups. It means you contribute from all groups, including those. You get everybody involved. That's what diversity is. Like like this is this isn't diversity, this is corporate <coughs> diversity. This is this is this is um this is to, to to play a certain tune on a violin, for one group of like, you've got the anti-bullying brand ambassador you've got um. Does somebody link me the whole thing so we can just read it or whatever? First of all, all diversity that comes from a corporation is going to be corporate diversity, of course. I want representative diversity. All right. So for the Twitch, that means ninety percent molding white young adults. All right, introducing the Twitch Safety Advisory Council. Keeping our community safe and healthy is a top priority for Twitch. Today, we're excited to announce the formation of the Twitch Safety Advisory Council, TSAC. Ha <laughs> ha Which will support the growth of our community moving forward. The Safety Advisory Council will inform and guide decisions made at Twitch by contributing their experience, expertise, and belief in Twitch's mission of empowering communities to create together. <clears throat> the, um... Um... This group is composed of online safety experts and Twitch creators who have a deep understanding of Twitch, its content, and its community. When developing this council, we felt it was essential to include both experts who can provide an external perspective as well as Twitch streamers who deeply understand creators' unique challenges and viewpoints. Each member of the council was carefully selected based on their familiarity with the Twitch community and their relevant personal and professional experiences. <clears throat> we are excited to work with this talented group to make Twitch the best place to grow and foster community. The creation of the Safety Advisory Council is just one way... We are enhancing our approach to issues of trust and safety. We'll continue to invest in tools, products, and policies to promote the safety and well-being of everyone on Twitch. Meet the members. Alex Holmes. Alex is Deputy CEO at nonprofit The Diana Award. Um, I'm going to assume this is like a real foundation and everything, right? Which is legacy to Princess Diana's belief that young people have the power to change the world. He's the founder of the peer-to-peer -peer support program Anti-Bullying Ambassadors, a network of trained young people dedicated to preventing peer-on-peer -peer violence on and offline and bullying, particularly in schools. Alex sits on the Global Safety Advisory Boards of a number of major social media and tech companies advising them on their approach to safety and online harms. <clears throat> he seems like a good member. He seems like somebody like this like makes sense to have on this. Um, Co Carnage is a Twitch partner, one of the original variety streamers on Twitch. He plays most major releases in any dialing. He's well known for his 100% franchise playthroughs leading up to major release. Cone Carnage is known for his positive community, the coalition, and his, slug and his slogan, happy, helpful, and respectful. Cone Carnage is a pretty old streamer, pretty big community. Um, does he crack 10k concurrence? If not, um, I know he's up there. <clears throat> yeah, 15k, 13k. So really big streamer, big history at Twitch. Makes sense. Cup of Noodle. Cup of Noodle is a partner Twitch ambassador and host slash commentator, the mayor of Cupton. I don't know what Cupton is. Is that a meme or something? Or I just don't know. A lover of zombies and a music connoisseur. Her streams range from playing games to hosting conventions and on site interviews to providing colorful commentary at esports events. Is she like a. Is she like a commentator? 4,000 followers, host slash commentator. Gets like 300 viewers, not too bad. Uh, uh. Uh, this is the first kind of sort of question. What's it matter how many they've got? Well, because if you're wanting to bring somebody on board for one of these things, you probably want people that have, like, relevant experience, that have, like, a good reason to be there, um, that have a pretty deep understanding of Twitch. Like, usually this is going to be somebody that's streamed for a long time, probably is relatively popular. Like, I don't know how much I would trust somebody with a community of, like, 50 viewers, for instance, to have, like, good insight into, like, trust and safety on Twitch. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. It's okay. Um, Emma Lonso, 
Emma is a director of the Center for Dem Democracy and Technology's Free Expression Project and leads ODTs or CDTs work to promote law and policy that supports user free expression. The project's work spans many subjects, including human trafficking, privacy, counterterrorism, radicalizing content. Uh, Emma's area of focus include intermediary, intermediary liability law, the capability limitations, automated content analysis, transfer recording, and best practices, and content moderation for primary. This seems like a decent pick. I don't know why there's not a picture of them. Are they like, it seems a little weird that you would have somebody like on like an advisory council that won't have a picture of them. Maybe I'm being like nitpicky, but <clears throat> okay. Um, ferociously Steph. Steph has been a full-time streamer since her debut playing competitive collegiate Heroes of the Storm in 2016. She's one of the first transgender streamers to ever be partnered on Twitch and the first to bring a transgender pride flag emote to the platform. Okay, her fight for inclusivity includes creating a competitive team composed entirely of marginalized gamers and vehemently opposing non-inclusive mechanics such as voice chat. I don't know if this is like an accomplishment or an achievement, but... Um, I'm a marginalized gamer. Why, because you're... Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm a boomer. Yeah. <laughs> don't start. Oh, this is a very small streamer. So this is a double-digit concurrent viewer streamer. Interesting. Okay. Dr. Samir Hinduja. Dr. Hinduja is a professor at the School of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Florida Atlantic University and co-director at the Cyberbullying Research Center. He is recognized internationally for his groundbreaking work in the subject of cyberbullying, sex, se sexting, and social media abuse. W wait, one of these is not like the other. <laughs> he is recognized internationally for his groundbreaking work on the subjects of cyberbullying, social media abuse, and sexting. <laughs> it's a little bit strange, but okay. Um, concerns that have paralleled the exponential growth in online communication for young people. As a noted speaker and expert on teens, social media use, Dr. Nigel also trains students, co-founder, okay, this is like pretty Hi. qualified. Yeah, I'm sure they probably mean like unsolicited sexting or sexting with minors or something, I guess, but that's just, it's just kind of funny to throw in like, these are two bad things and then it, this is just like sex. Like, it'd be like saying like, I'm here to talk to teenagers. Um, we're, we're here to crack down on like bad stuff that happens in school. Um, and we've published a lot of work on like murdering other students, um, bullying other students, beating up people and having sex. It's like, and okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it means like sexting abuse or like sexting with minors or something or is it sure. Dale Taylor is a professor of comparative studies and comparative, me comparative? comparative media studies at MIT and co-founder and director of research for any key and organization that is funding development. Okay, yeah, this seems fine. Dr. Taylor's research explores the interrelation between culture and technology and online news and leisure environments. 2018 book, Watch Me Play, Twitch and the Rise of Game Live Streaming. It's the first of its kind. Zizarin is a Twitch partner who's been streaming since 2015. It streams all these on ARPGs, particularly Path of Exile. He believes Twitch is a culture. Uh, I don't know about this guy. I'm pretty sure his stream is dying. Um, plays what is the shit game shit version of diablo 3 um never keeps his hair color the same uh makes suboptimal plays in his D, &D campaign <laughs> not too sure about this one um okay interesting so out of like eight people two or three are questionable um alex is good Cone Carnage is good. Cup of Noodle is questionable. Emma Lanza. I think this person is good. I don't know why you'd put so many accounts like this. It doesn't have a picture. That's really weird. Um, this pick is kind of questionable. Um, this Dr. Samir guy seems good. Uh, Till Taylor seems good. Zizarin seems good. Um, yeah. Yeah, just the, the two or three here are really weird. You meant pick, right? She has a pick on the org's website. Oh, why wouldn't they post it here, right? I, that just seems weird, right? Like you have all these pictures of all these people and then you have like a logo for a company. Does this person really identify as a deer? Don't. No, shut up. I understand there's the Twitch clip, but do they unironically identify as a deer? 
can come back to here, maybe. I've seen this. Down to the back of the head. They, I don't think they're, an, they're not actually like an other kin. No, post proof. I don't believe, I don't believe you. Check their Twitter. No, no, no. Oh dear. Let's see what my friend is up to. No way. No, they just put that in there to be cute. They're not, they're not actually. Why couldn't they be, Steve? You got a problem with that? I am discriminating against dear other kin. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Maybe I, maybe that's where my boomerdom like actually comes out. Maybe I am bigoted in that way. I can't, I can't do the other kin thing. I can't get on board with that. Trans people, non-binaries, all that shit is cool as fuck. Pep a laugh. Not the deer people. What about furries? Uh, furries is fine. It's just like a fetish, right? It can be like a lifestyle fetish. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not. I don't. I'm not into it. But if somebody is, it's fine. Well, I mean, you haven't tried it. I mean, as a guy who's tried a lot of new things, perhaps you should try the uh, the furry life and see how how it goes. Maybe you'll you'll like it. I mean, you can't say until you've tried it once, right? No, I'm pretty sure. I've never eaten shit before, but I think I can say that I probably wouldn't enjoy it. Here's your proof. Excuse me, Twitch. Please understand how important it is for deer representation on your platform. I'm a deer playing a deer, and there's no way for me to tag myself as such. No, they're trolling. You don't know that. I mean, and it's very discriminatory to, uh, off by joining the safety community. community. It's trolling. Bear. Why can't she identify as a deer? It's trolling. Shut up, Dan. God damn it. I dated a girl that identified as an Alkin. Shut up. It's a fursona. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Stop linking me. I don't want to read anymore. I'm going to get banned for bullying. Please don't make me bully people. Devin apparently was considered for counsel. Oh, now we know the real reason why he was upset. <laughs> Maybe this is the only dude that, that doesn't. Um, but every single other person who is a streamer on this platform, why in any universe, if you're in a corporation, would you hire people who fear you to, to, to make decisions that could potentially contradict you? If your full-time income is based off the platform that you are, that you are uh, providing advice to to police, why the fuck would you ever take any chances? That, like, so, so like full transparency, I was approached for the council uh, and I was in the initial round of consideration for people who should be on it, right? Uh, and I said, yes, I said, I would absolutely do it. And then I did not make it through the final cut. I'm literally one of the only broadcasters on this platform that does nothing to lose if they ban me. If they ban me, I, I don't give a fuck. I literally don't, right? Those are the kind of people that you want because I will tell Twitch exactly what I think. Uh, it, like, it's, it's like, and I know this is like a pretentious like, viewpoint, but it's fucking insane they didn't put me on this council. Wait, what? Maybe this is you're in a corporation. Would you hire people who fear you? Wait, that's who not true though. Wait, am I wrong? What? Isn't Twitch incredibly important for Devin? Yeah, of like, course. He literally quit all of his shit in order to go full time yeah, Twitch. Why, yeah. why is he saying that? Like, that's totally not the case. To the of what a fucking liar, dude. I want credit for Joshua, okay? I want to say that I ended his campaign run. Please let me have this, guys.